Good morning, and welcome to worship. Thank you for joining us. This morning we celebrate the sixth Sunday of Easter. Jesus does not abandon his followers. Through the Holy Spirit, Jesus comes to abide with his disciples of every generation. As Pentecost draws near, we are reminded that the risen Christ dwells in us as the Spirit of Truth. We receive this Spirit in baptism and pray that in our gathering around the Lord's table, the Spirit will transform us to be the body of the risen Christ in the world. If you feel so moved, please support our ministries by giving online, through mail or in person. You may visit our website www.christsterling.org for more information. Thank you for your generosity. This morning we would like to thank Beth and Elliot Palo for serving in worship. Greetings from Christ Lutheran Church, Sterling Heights, Michigan. I am Pastor Luther Martell, and on behalf of staff and leaders here, I welcome all of you to our public online worship event once again this week. Again, we have been gathered by the Holy Spirit to bless each other and to bless God. But most graciously, most amazingly, the Holy Spirit has gathered us together so that God can bless us, so that God can bless us with God's holy word as it is read, sung, and preached. Let us begin our worship together in meditative silence, preparing our hearts and minds for Christ Jesus. And once again this week, I remind us that the Christ Jesus for whom we prepare is the Easter Jesus, the resurrected Jesus, the out in the world Jesus, the on the loose Jesus. That means that no one and nothing ever can be or will be the same. And that's God's good news for the world. We pray together. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Our worship begins with a liturgy for remembering God's work in the sacrament of holy baptism. Water by itself is only water. But together with God's word, it is life-giving water, giving us new life here on earth today and in heaven one day. Trusting in the word of life given in baptism, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We pray together the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, Receive the prayers of your children and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Chapter 14 If you love me, show it by doing what I've told you. I will talk to the Father, and he'll provide you another friend so that you will always have someone with you. This friend is the Spirit of Truth. The godless world can't take him in because it doesn't have eyes to see him, doesn't know what to look for. But you know him already because he's been staying with you and will even be in you. 
I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming back. In just a little while, the world will no longer see me. But you're going to see me because I am alive, and you're about to come alive. At that moment, you will know absolutely that I'm in my Father, and you're in me, and I'm in you. The person who knows my commandments and keeps them, that's who loves me. And the person who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and make myself plain to him. Friends and neighbors in Christ, I begin our sermon time together this week with a recitation of a poem entitled, The Leaving. While many interpretations are available to the reader, and in our case, in this situation, the listener, I offer an interpretation influenced by today's gospel, which comes to us from the writer of John on the sixth Sunday of Easter. The poem, The Leaving, is about an adult woman reflecting on the meaning and the purpose of life. Lost in the dark determination of accomplishing tasks, a young girl is interrupted by the goodness of a new day. Released from the confines of her own heart and introduced to a surprising new reality of another world she didn't previously know even existed. The Leaving by Bridget Pegeen Kelly. My father said I could not do it, but all night I picked the peaches. The orchard was still, the canals ran steadily. I was a girl then, my chest its own walled garden. How many ladders to gather an orchard? I had only one, and a long patience with lit hands, and the looking of the stars which moved right through me. The way the water moved through the canals, with a voice that seemed to speak of this moonless gathering, and those who had gathered before me. I put the peaches in the pond's cold water, all night up the ladder and down, all night my hands twisting fruit as if I were entering a thousand doors. All night my back a straight road to the sky. And then, out of its own goodness, out of the far fields of the stars, the morning came, and inside me was the stillness a bell possesses just after it has been rung, before the metal begins to long again for the clapper's stroke. The light came over the orchard, the canals were silver, and then were not. And the pond was, I could see as I laid the last peach in the water, full of fish and eyes. Friends and neighbors in Christ, please notice with me that today's gospel narrative is part of what is known in John's gospel as Jesus' farewell discourse. Jesus is in the process of leaving the earth first through his death and ultimately through his ascension. And so it is for us in John's gospel this week that Jesus, because he is leaving, is going to say goodbye to his disciples, leaving them with words of expectation and words of wisdom. But even more importantly, please also notice with me that the topic of Jesus' farewell discourse is not human behavior while Jesus is absent. Rather, the topic of Jesus' farewell discourse is what God promises to do in Jesus' absence until he comes again to judge the world in righteousness. And God's promise for us today is this. After Jesus leaves the earth, again, first through his death and ultimately through his ascension, after Jesus leaves the earth, God will provide another divine advocate who will inspire God's people to accomplish big things out in the world. God's pro promise has three parts. 
The first part is this. Jesus in his leaving, Jesus in his departure, Jesus in his absence does not leave you alone on this earth to toil in ignominy. Secondly, God's Holy Spirit lives in, with, and under each and every one of you by the gift of faith. And thirdly, God's Holy Spirit, this indwelling Holy Spirit, calls and equips and sends each and every one of you out into the world to be in relationship with your biblical neighbor so that God can accomplish big things for them and on their behalf by the power of the gospel. Friends and neighbors in Christ, with Jesus' Holy Spirit promise in mind, with Jesus' Holy Spirit promise indwelling your heart and your very being, answer this. What is it that God is inspiring you to do with your life right now? What big God thing are you being called to accomplish in God's kingdom today? What big thing is God intending to accomplish through you out in the world? What gospel thing is your life consumed by and overwhelmed by and wrapped up in today? There's a story of a clown whose big floppy hat fell off of his head when he bowed in response to the crowd, appreciating his comedy with cheers and clapping. It just so happened that just as the clown was about to pick up his hat off the ground, a circus elephant came by and sat on the clown's hat. The clown attempted to pull his hat out from underneath the elephant, but he understandably failed. The clown gestured wildly to try to get the elephant to move, but of no avail. The clown reached around to the front of the elephant and took hold of his trunk and tried to pull the elephant off his hat, but again, quite understandably, no luck. As a last resort, the clown aimed to kick the elephant in the rear, hoping to dislodge him and motivate him to get off the clown's hat. But quite predictably, it was the clown who walked away with a sore foot. Angry, frustrated, demoralized, defeated, and still embarrassingly hatless, the clown sat down on the ground at a safe distance away from the elephant and began to eat a handful of peanuts. At once, the elephant stood up, lazily lumbered toward the clown, and unapologetically ate the clown's peanuts. And now, friends and neighbors in Christ, the clown could retrieve his floppy hat, which is all he wanted all along. Friends and neighbors in Christ, in God's eternal kingdom already present on earth today, big things don't happen by forcing the world to participate or to receive or to cooperate. Big things Kingdom things happen out in the world by feeding the world. At first read, this week's gospel passage from the writer of John might seem somewhat suspect to a Lutheran theological ear for its conditional language. If you love Jesus, you will obey his commandments. And if you obey Jesus' commandments, 
you will get another advocate and you will be loved by the Father. Before continuing, let's get our theological bearings. Let's get our theological grammar straight. Firstly, know this. Every human being's relationship with God is not dependent on people's thoughts and behaviors toward God. Your relationship with God is not dependent on you. Every human being's relationship with God is instead dependent on God's thoughts and behaviors toward you, toward all of humanity. Secondly, while humanity's behavior toward God is indeed the conditional behavior, dictated by what we know and don't know, dictated by what we understand and don't understand and misunderstand, dictated by what we like and don't like, dictated by what makes sense and doesn't make sense. God's behavior toward and with you and with all of humanity is not only unconditional, God's behavior toward and with and for humanity is holy, perfect, and true. Friends and neighbors in Christ, God's gospel for us, God's gospel for you this morning proclaims that there is no bigger privilege, there is no bigger duty, there is no greater responsibility, there is no more, no fantastic joy greater in the world today than to obey Jesus' commandments. And all of these commandments, each and every one of Jesus' commandments, are aimed at loving your biblical neighbor. The fifth chapter of John's first letter states, For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Friends and neighbors in Christ, you are not called to conform and move the world to the will of God. Instead, you are called to feed the world to feed the world with word and by example of God's grace and God's mercy and God's unconditional love and God's compassion and God's peace and God's hope and God's justice intended for all people. And in doing so, the world will be and is being moved by God's grace that comes to us in the death and the resurrection of Jesus by the power and the animation of the Holy Spirit. Friends and neighbors in Christ, as you go on now today and this week, in fact, the rest of your life, each and every day of the rest of your life, as you go about your ordinary lives of daily obedience to God and God's commandments, reinterpreted by Jesus out in the broken world, Live in the confidence of freedom that the resurrected Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit is redeeming, is reconciling, and recreating you and all things through you because God loves you and God loves all people. This morning, our song of the day is, I love you, Lord, and we'll sing it through twice together.
profess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our worship today continues with the liturgy for prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their needs. Let's begin our prayer time together in simple words and thoughts and phrases of praise and thanksgiving. All that we are, all that we have, not the result of our work, but simply God's gifts to us. Yet God's gifts not for our glory and our purposes, but for God's glory and God's purposes. Let us praise God and give God thanks, for God has created and sustains and promises to redeem all things. We pray together. Let us continue our prayer time by asking for our daily bread. All of those things that make us the dignified human beings created in God's image that God intended. Enough food to drink. Warm, safe, secure shelter. Good health. Relationships of support and accountability, holy purpose out in the world. God gives us all of these things without our asking, but in our asking, we find ourselves in relationship with a God who loves us on God's terms, not ours. We pray together. Continue our prayer time together with petitions, humbly asking for forgiveness and absolution. We know by the gift of faith that God waits for our confession, not because God is waiting for information, but because God is calling us to let go of, to unburden ourselves with those things that keep us up at night, those things that belabor us, those things that beleaguer us. God desires that we live freely, that we live with clear conscience. And so let us confess our sins, those things that we have done poorly or wrongly, those things that we have failed to do, and let us know that forgiveness that we might be lightened. We pray together.
Finally, today for our prayer time, let us lift up the lives of others. Each and every one of us participating in this virtual prayer time know at least one person out in the world who would benefit from God's good news, God's grace, God's unconditional love, God's promise that one day the entire world will be made new and put back in right relationship. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is Christ Jesus. We all know someone needs to hear those words and perhaps even more importantly experience them let us pray even more boldly then that somehow we figure into God's plan God's imagination of being emissaries of that grace and mercy and hope and justice for our biblical neighbor we pray together Good and gracious Heavenly Father, you have heard the prayers and the petitions of your children. Receive them in grace and mercy. Act on them in hope and justice out in the world according to your good, holy, and perfect wisdom. We ask all these things, whatever else you see that we need. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This morning, our ascending song is Christ is Alive, Let Christians Sing, number 389 from Evangelical Lutheran Worship, and together we will sing verses 1 and 4. Join us in our Easter dismissal. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. You are the body of Christ, raised up for the world. Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.